Rav Cook Selected Letters, Chapter 8, the topic is Torah versus Other Religions, preface to letter number 8. In the second of these letters, Rav Cook elaborates on the same subject. Heresy nowadays is, as he said in the previous letter, based on a search for righteousness and truth, which is indeed itself the way of the Lord, and therefore contains in itself the seed of a full return to Torah and holiness. But here he brings a new argument for the same optimistic outlook. Rav Cook's attitude towards today's secularists is based on his interpretation of Kabbalah. He is basically optimistic, envisioning continued improvement and the victory of the good. Since good accumulates over the generations and evil does not, the power of evil weakens from generation to generation. For this reason, Rav Cook believes that the secularists and even Jews who have converted to Christianity, may still be brought back to Judaism and that it is important to maintain relations with them. In the first part of the letter, Rav Cook also refers to his ruling that cultivation of Israel during the sabbatical year is permissible. Despite his ruling, he refrained from sending Etrogim from Israel to his friends outside the country during the sabbatical year. Letter number 8 by the grace of God, the holy city of Jaffa may be built and established 26th of July 56. Sorry, 26th of Elul 5670. This is the 30th of September 1910. To my precious friend, the honoured Rav, distinguished in Torah and inspired with the awe of the Almighty, Almighty, our teacher Rav Duber Milstein. May he live a long and good life. Amen. May the Lord inscribe you for a good and productive new year. Considerable time has passed since I received your precious letter. Due to my preoccupations that reply to you, my friend has been tardy. Please forgive me. On the matter of the etrogim, in the past I wholeheartedly endeavoured to send you an etrog, my friend, but this year, due to the holiness of the sabbatical year, I refrained from personally, send, personally sending fruits from the Holy Land abroad because... Even though in conformity with the decision of Torah scholars of Israel of blessed memory, I am lenient in my judgment to permit others the use of sabbatical fruits that are so essential and upon which the Jewish settlement depends for its continued existence. Uh, a footnote, the Heta circumvented the laws of the sabbatical year by formally selling the lands of Jews in Israel to a Gentile, thereby exempting the Jews from some restrictions on agriculture in the sabbatical year. But I am strict with myself not to be involved at all this year with sending Israeli fruits aboard, abroad. As for Etrogim of non-Jews, you must certainly know they are assumed to be grafted, and thus I have no business with them at all. I hope you forgive me, my honoured friend, for not fulfilling your request this time, and may the Lord bless be he give us the merit that each of us will be able to fulfil the desire of his friend for posterity, as is the will of God, bless be he, and the will of all those who fear him. On the matter of your children, my opinion is as it has always been. Adopt a pleasing manner of gentle, gentleness and of intimacy because only with bonds of love and acts of benevolence will we be able to draw to us the hearts of our young, only through gentleness and love. There is no doubt that even though now the results are still minimal, in due time, with the help of God, you will find it will bear fruit of glory, holiness and faith and will lead to the paths of righteousness. I am closing with a blessing, with great love, for good, good life and peace, as befits your precious soul and those of your friends, wishing you peace with true love. Abraham Yitzchak HaKohen Cook P.S. At the time I hastily wrote my letter to you, your previous letter was not before me. Now I have seen it and remembered that you had commented on what I had said, that nowadays there was hope, with the help of God, to save also those souls of the holy people that have fallen into the domain of Minut. These are the Christians. May the merciful save us. We will not be stopped by what our sages of blessed memory said. None that go to her return and find again the paths of life. The footnote is, the reference is to the Gemara in Avodah Zarah, 17a, which expounds the verse in Proverbs 2.19. It states that someone who leaves Judaism and converts to any of the numerous faiths of the time will not be able to repent without dying. Rashi explains that the apostate's road to repentance is so wrought with sorrow and regret that the penitent will surely die. The world has been blessed with the fragrance. Back to the text. The world has been blessed with the fragrance 
of the Holy Torah for such a long time that the shell, that is the power of evil, has lost its power and can no longer prevent those who have fallen prey to it from repenting and being saved. You, my friend, ask me for the reason for this. Indeed, my beloved, these are subjects of the highest import and their sources lie in the secrets of the Holy Torah. However, for the love of my friend, I will hint at it in short. It is an important rule that even though the world is in constant and steady decline, this is only the outer aspect. Individual deeds and attributes are indeed in decline and are not of the same calibre of earlier generations. A footnote is in Shabbat 112b, Brachot 20a. Rav Zaira said, If those before us were sons of angels, we are sons of men, and if those before us were sons of men, we are like asses. Back to the text. However, with regard to the innerness, which is the power of the unity of the holy nation, the community of Israel, each and every generation adds to the sanctity of previous generations. Sanctity accumulates, and the holiness of the Torah, the learning of the Torah, however little, and the good deeds of the latter generations augment the light of the past. Sin neither bears fruit nor can it accumulate. This is the secret of all doers of iniquity as of iniquity are scattered from Tehillim 92.10 Although the nation as a whole is inwardly filled with more of the Lord's light than in the past this light cannot be openly seen until the coming of the Messiah our Vindicator quickly in our days who will come out of the palace of the bird's nest A footnote is This figures in the Zohar as the place from which the Messiah will come forth Rav Cook explains the symbol of the bird's nest as the place of incubation from where potential power, the egg, develops into the realization of the potential, the hatching of the young. So too, when the Messiah comes, all accumulated holiness will be revealed. Back to the text. When the Messiah arrives, all the accumulated latent holiness will be revealed and released, and all flesh will see it together. This is from Proverbs 30:28. Long before the redemption, it was possible for the shell to actively foster evil beliefs among Jews, such as idolatry, sorcery, and minut. Minut is also an evil faith, which is the worst part of idolatry. To consume a soul that surrounds it with traps and sucks away the blood from its spiritual life, may the merciful one save us. This is the meaning of, the spider clambers up with her hands. Footnote. The shell, evil, is symbolized in the Zohar as a spider, which spins a web around its prey and sucks its juices out. Back to the letter. But in ages close but in ages closer to the redemption, the shell <coughs> has no more power to foster evil faiths, but only to weaken heaven forbid the flicker of faith in the hearts of the faint. This weakness is illusory is illusory, even those who are entrapped in it think that they have fallen into a snare of heresy with no way out. This is only an absence of understanding and the lack of an illumination of the mind and heart. Therefore, immediately when the way of the Lord and the ways of common sense and good feelings are illuminated for them, the light shines upon them and they ultimately return to goodness. They are those in Jacob who turn back from sin, for whom a redeemer to Zion shall come. From Messiah 59.20 <clears throat> Therefore we have trust in the kindness of the Lord. Blessed be he who recalls the kindness of the patriarchs in order to bring redemption to the future generations. That all our children, even those who are seemingly remote and lost, will be disciples of the Lord, as the verse says, and I'll sow them among the nations. And they shall remember me in far countries, and they shall live with their children and shall return. From Zechariah 10.9 the evil in the present generation, then, is only external, for within their souls all is good and holy. That is why they stir to many thoughts of justice and righteousness, even though they are mistaken in their ways, and this is not the way, nor is this the city. From Deuteronomy 29.17, Rashi explains it as a root which yields and multiplies wickedness. Still, many of them are devoted to the nation as a whole and are proud of the name of Israel, although they themselves do not know for what or why? They're different even though their nationalism imitates other countries' brands of, nult of nationalism. The essence of Asaph's character is a root that bears gall and wormwood. Sorry, that's from Deuteronomy 29.17, which Rashi explains it as a root which yields and multiplies wickedness. It is the root of wickedness, bloodshed and destruction. The essence of Israel, on the other hand, is holy and good capable of justice, 
and righteousness, identical with the true knowledge of the Lord in the world, from Genesis 18.19. This is the secret of what is written in the Tikkun Zohar, Tikkun 60, lowly and riding on a donkey. That's from Zechariah 9.9. The generation of the Messianic era will be good on the inside and bad on the outside, which is the meaning of, it is all turned white, it is pure, from Leviticus 13.16. A donkey is inherently holy, even though it has more marks of impurity than other impure animals, of which some have at least one mark of purity. Uh, The footnote is, the Bible classifies animals that chew the cud and have holy cloven hooves as pure and permitted as food. Those animals that have but one of these characteristics, such as camels which chew their cud but do not have holy split hooves, or the pig which has split hooves but does not chew its cud, are impure and prohibited as as food. The Bible declares that only the first male offspring of domestic pure animals is to be sanctified to God. The impure male ass, however, is an exception and must be sanctified, although it neither chews its cud nor has cloven hooves. Is it not sanctified as a firstborn? From Exodus 13:2, but its holiness is very hidden and concealed, as is only and is only revealed through redemption. These are matters that cannot be explained in all their depth, save directly from lip to ear, in the hour of grace for those who are seated before God. Be that as it may, I shall stand on my guard to befriend and not to alienate, to befriend even those distanced by compelling them to recognize. Kiddushin 71, 71a. This should be the whole objective of the prayers of the honest people of Israel, to connect all the souls of the people of the Lord to the source of life, and to reveal the light of holiness hidden in them. There is neither measure nor bounds to the eternal joy and delight of the Lord that comes from the changing of darkness into light. This is the essence of the Torah that is recited in the palace of the Messiah, as it is mentioned in the beginning of the Zohar. May my words be read for the joy of your heart and the hearts of all fearers who fear God and eagerly await his salvation. Your close friend, Avraham Yitzchak HaKohen Cook, Igrot 332.